Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Morning. Welcome on this bright, sunny summer. <laughs> I had a friend over from uh, Australia staying in the village for a few weeks. And um, when he first came, he said to me, he says, why is it Scottish people? You're always talking about the weather. And I says, well, that's because we have weather, whereas you have a climate. <laughs> uh, and I says, and this current summer, we seem to be having the, all weathers every single day, you know? And you never know what you're going to get from one day to the next. But uh, hopefully we're all nice and cosy in here this morning. So welcome, and I'll hand you over to Robert. We'll weather the weather, whatever the weather, whether we like it or not, right? <laughs> <coughs> uh, what's the weather like in New Jersey? 26 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> You're a brave man coming home, aren't you, in the summer? Yeah, no, really, it's wonderful to have James Smith here with his boys, James and Chester. Did I get, did I get that right? James and Chester were baptized in this church over a Christmas, re a recent Christmas. And it's just wonderful to see you boys here. And in a minute, I've got something for you to do. I want you to make something out of Duplo for me. Can you do that? Yeah, please, I need your help. But that's, that's, in a, that's for a minute. Maybe I could say, first of all, um, uh, before we start the service, that um, uh, there's many things happening, and we're, we're cracking into action uh, end of August. And Messy Church is one of the things that's Getting back again next Saturday, Messy Church here. So don't miss it if you have grandchildren or children who um, would like to take part. Bring them along, or they'll bring you along maybe. Um, the other thing I want to say is that I would like to organize a admission of new members service between now and the end of the year. We'll probably do it on a, on a united service, on a f first of the month service. And, and the reason I'm, I'm mentioning it now is in case you or you know somebody who is very eager to join the church to become a member, and you can become a member simply by transference, and that's done uh, uh, administratively. But if you would like to join by taking promises in front of the congregation, uh, that's very, very lovely and very exciting. And we'll be planning something like that between now and December. So if you know anybody, if you are such a person, please have a word with me. We thank God for giving us this special place to gather in. And most of all, we thank God for his presence here. God who is everywhere, we come to worship you here in this house. And Jesus, you lived amongst us. We prepare a place for you in our hearts and our minds. So let's begin our service as we sing the Servant King. First line is, from heaven you came, helpless babe. Let us worship God.
So let us all pray. Almighty God, here in this place, we come to worship you. And as we gather here in your house, we close our eyes for a moment just to shut out all distractions. For you are the reason that we are here. It is your presence that we seek. Father, we confess that sometimes we forget you. Often we get ourselves involved in so many things that we forget your presence. But now we would seek you, focus on you, concentrate our hearts and minds only on you. And together, in community with one another, we come to hear your word and to learn of your loving ways through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, this morning is the last, sadly, the last in a series of summer services where we've been looking at the story of the kings of Israel, starting briefly with Saul going big time on David and latterly looking at King Solomon. We've been looking at lessons from the lives of these kings. And today, on this final Sunday in this series, we're looking at the prayer of dedication of the new temple. What has happened is that Solomon has completed his task. It was a task that was started by David many years before, and now it has been finished, and he dedicates the newly built temple, a permanent, uh, an elaborately decorated dwelling place for the Ark of the Covenant. And this week, we're going to sort of discover what makes spaces special, what, why God needs and should have a holy place. We'll reflect briefly on our own worship spaces and how they help us to know and experience God's presence. In a minute, we're going to have a reading of the prayer of dedication. But I'd like to introduce you to another prayer. And before I do, let's just sing that song, Be Still and Know That I Am God, because the prayer I'm going to share with you is one that ushers you, ushers us all into God's presence. It's a prayer for feeling the presence of God wherever we may be. So let's sing this song first. Be still and know that I am God. <coughs> saves and heals, we come this morning. And uh, I've mentioned this before, St. Patrick's breastplate is about making space for God 
to come into every situation and to every space. It's an ancient way of acknowledging God's presence with us. And it uses our bodies in prayer while we repeat something. It's an exercise where we use, and this morning we will use an even shorter version of the St. Patrick's breastplate than the one we've got in front of us. I want to invite you, first of all, to be part of this and just to be where you are, sitting comfortably. You don't need to sit up straight if you're not. You, if you are sitting up straight, then stay where you are, but just be comfortable and have your feet on the floor, unless you prefer to have them in the air. It's better to have them on the floor. And have your hands on, the, on your lap. And uh, we're going to say these words. Christ around me, Christ above me, Christ within me, and Christ beneath me. It's quite simple, isn't it? These four phrases taken from the prayer of St. Patrick. And uh, there are four actions for each of these lines, very simple actions that will not cause you any stress in doing them. So ha Christ around me means having your hands facing inwards because that you're, that you're picturing a, a circle around you, a canopy around you, okay? Christ around me. Christ above me almost as though you're holding the heaven in your hands. You're holding the sky up, okay? Uh, Christ above me. And then Christ within me means lowering your hand, hands to your heart and follow with your eyes looking down, okay? That's Christ within me. And then Christ beneath me, very gently moving your hands to rest on your knees. I've got to tell you, it's more difficult for me than it is for you. <laughs> I've got to bend over to do it. But if you're sitting properly, you should just be able to leave your hands on your knees, okay? So we'll just quickly rehearse that, shall we? Christ around me, Christ above me, Christ within me, Christ beneath me. Well done. So let's just do that now for... Uh, repeat it two or three times. And uh, as you get used to doing the exercise, you, you're not so much thinking about what to do. You're thinking of Christ's presence. So let, let yourself focus on the Lord, focusing on Jesus as we do this. Christ around me, Christ above me, Christ within me, Christ beneath me. Christ around me. Christ above me. Christ within me. Christ beneath me. You can do this anywhere. You know, you can do this at home. You can do it sitting on a bus. Don't worry about what people think. You can, you can do it in, in a public park, sitting on a bench. You can do it, it, Christ around me, Christ above me, Christ within me, Christ beneath me. I think you've got that. Let's do it one more time. Christ around me, Christ above me, Christ within me, Christ beneath me. Next week we'll be thinking a bit about how sometimes our what we hear is not what we do, and what we do is not what we read or hear. And uh, one of the things that helps to, is actually do something that's focused on activity. So try and remember this very simple prayer, Christ around me, Christ above me, Christ within me, Christ beneath me. And I'll check it out with you next week. No exam, no exam. You know, there had been talk of building a temple for, to the glory of God for quite a while in Israel. The Israelites, you see, believed that the Lord God dwelled in a tent. 
Uh, that isn't a strange thought, you know, God dwelling in a tent. Because they had been wandering through the desert. They'd been walking in the wilderness for a long time, for many years. And they'd been living in tents themselves. And so it only made sense to them for, for them to regard God as also dwelling in a tent amongst them. And by living in a tent, God was able to travel everywhere that the people did. Wherever the people wandered, God could travel with them. But then there came a day when they had a land to live in and the people no longer lived in tents out in the desert, but instead lived in houses. And then it dawned on them, it didn't seem right for God to be in a tent when all the people had the comforts of living in houses. Certainly to King David and King Solomon, they thought it was abomination for God to be living in a tent when they all lived in fine houses. It was only right that God should have a permanent dwelling place as well. And so it was Solomon's goal to build a temple, not a tent, but a temple for God. I would like some help. And I, I, I could ask any of you, but I'm going to ask, you know, are your boys around? Because if, if they're happy through there, that's okay. Well, it's all right. James, are you up for this? Actually, I'll tell you what it is first. Before you volunteer, what we're going to do is we're going to build a temple for God. I just happen to have a box of Duplo here. And we're trying to imagine what kind of place would you design for God? Obviously, you're limited by the color of the Duplo bricks and the shape and size of them. But can we imagine building a house for God, not a tent, but a, a temple for God to live in. A spiritual temple was what I'm going to talk about in a minute, but right now I want to make a physical temple on this. So I'm going to put it on the floor. Do you think they're up for it? Are you up for this? Can you, can you play with some bricks for me? Oh, thank you, James. Maybe, maybe the, these boys will help you, maybe not, we'll see, but anyway. Oh, what a, what a mess the minister's made, hey, listen, man. Now you, no one will complain now, will they? Because anything you do is clearing up the mess. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, what we're going to do is build a house, try to build a, uh, a temple or something. I know uh, there are strange bricks. Uh, James, is this James? Hi, James. Well, this is James. Can I introduce you to James? And James, can I introduce you to James? Okay. We're going to build a temple for God. See how you can get on, okay? And I think your brother Jess is coming. Okay. Sometimes, you know, we find it easier to connect with a, having a special place for God. And that's why churches have become so important to us. They... They're almost, they almost speak to God for us. That's why it's so hard for us to let go of churches because they speak to of God, uh, how buildings have spoken of God's interaction with our families over the years. Just think about the places that are special to you. Well, let us hear the reading of God's word. I should help with the building instead. <laughs> so today's reading ooh, feedback, is from 1 Kings chapter 8, uh, verses 22 to 30, and then from 41 to 43. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel, spread out his hands towards heaven and said, Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. You who keep your covenant in lot of love with your servants who continued wholeheartedly in your way. You have kept your promise to your servant David, my father. With your mouth you have promised and with your hand you have fulfilled it as it is today. Now, Lord God, the God of Israel, keep your servant David, my father, the promises you made to him when you said, you shall never fail to have a successor to sit before me on the throne of Israel. 
If only your descendants are careful in all they do to walk before me faithfully as you have done. And now, God of Israel, let your word that you promised your servant David, my father, come true. But will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heaven, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. Yet give attention to your servant's prayer and his plea for mercy, Lord my God. Hear the cry and the prayer of your, that your servant is praying in the presence this day. May your eyes be open towards this temple night and day, this place of which you said, my name shall be there, so that you will hear the prayer your servant prays towards this place. Hear the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray towards this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. And from verse 41, as for the foreigner who does not belong to your people Israel, but has come from a distant land because of your name, for they will hear of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm. They will come and pray towards this temple. Then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Do whatever the foreigner asks of you, so that all peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your own people Israel, and may know that this house I have built bears your name. May God bless us at these reasons from his word. Amen. Thank you, Doug. Did you know you've just read one of the longest prayers in the Bible? Well, actually, you didn't read all of it. We selected verses from it. But it is one of the longest prayers in the Bible. It's about 30 verses long. Uh, the, the longest verse in the Bible, I believe, is in Nehemiah chapter 9. It's got 33 verses in. Uh, the longest prayer in the New Testament is the prayer by Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's in John 17, and it lasts about 26 verses. I have to t say that all of you got off quite lightly today because in the 17th century, ministers in Scotland would often pray for up to 45 minutes. So I don't know how many verses that would be, but it was a long time and it felt long. Um, what we're seeing today, though, is de the dedication prayer of Solomon, not about whether it's long or short, that's not the point. It's what does it say? What is the content of it? Uh, having asked God for wisdom in governing, Solomon is now praying for himself and for all the people. And Solomon prays in public, not in private, but he prays in public in the presence of everyone. And he begins by indicating the unique, unique, uniqueness of God, the specialness of God. No one has acted in history as God has, performing great miracles and directing the course of events. Solomon then talks in wonder at how a God for whom the heavens are not big enough can contain himself within the confines of a temple. How can such a great big God live in a temple? How can he be in the temple that he's going to be built? And Solomon concludes his prayer by begging God to continue to watch over the temple and to listen to his prayers and those of the people. Let's sing another song now. Two verses... We have come into his house. We're going to sing, we'll maybe play it over first. Uh, two verses of this song. Imagine you're coming into God's house. This is the song we should be singing.
So, how are we getting on with building a temple for God, I wonder? Well, a quick update. This is not, you can continue building after this, but I'm just going to have a quick look and see how you're getting on. Well, I see a big wall, a very impressive wall here with two, three, three doors, okay? And then somewhere in the background, we, that looks like a table or something. What is it, do you think? Yeah. What have we got here, James? A this is a massive throne. This is a beautiful throne. Uh, I think I, I am looking at the yellow bricks like gold. You're making a golden throne. And over here, Chester's busy doing something. I don't know what, but hey, it looks brilliant. A tower. A tower block. Brilliant. Every temple should have a tower block. Well, keep going, keep going, because we're going to be thinking just for a second or two about this temple. In, in, in the prayer dedicating the temple as the house of God, Sol Solomon referred to the promise that God made to his father David. But as you know, both father and son had been unfaithful to God. Solomon wasn't perfect and neither was David. They're just like us. We do things that don't please God and we are just like them. The difference is, today, it's transparent to us now that God can still use us to do his work if God lives in us by his Spirit. Think of how Jesus treated his disciples. He treated them as the new temple. For it's by his Spirit that God can live in the hearts of all who believe. God, what the Father wants the whole world to know about him and to love him. And when you think of Jesus' life and ministry, it was limited in some ways by his physical body, in that he could only be in one place at one time. But the Holy Spirit, who he has given into the world, can be everywhere and can be with everyone at the same time. So now the congregation is the temple. The congregation, the church of God, is the temple that God calls home. And the role of gathered congregations like this one and the one at Port Moak and at Kinross is to reach out. It's to remind people of their God who wants to meet with them. It's to remind them that they're welcome in God's house. Remember you saw at the end of that prayer just now how... Um, Solomon prayed for foreigners and uh, you know, in our reading today Solomon prayed for foreigners and those who come from afar that was right at the end of his prayer and he was reminding everyone that God was concerned with peoples far away not just the ones that they knew there are other people who await our welcome and invitation I think this is really relevant for us just now as we are losing buildings, we're losing Cleese Church, we're losing Port Moak, losing Port Moak Church in our new united uh, enterprise. And uh, that can be, a, it can be a real genuine sense of loss about that. But the reality is that God is not confined to any building. And we can be the church in the park when we're doing the breastplate prayer, right? You got it? We can be the church of God when we're sitting at home doing the breastplate player. You know, Christ above me, Christ within me. You know, when we're doing these, these actions, or even just saying the words, we're bringing Christ close to us. And wherever we are, when we're acting, when we're speaking, when we're interacting, God loves to use us as his new temple. He lives in us. Let's pray. Lord, you have a home here and also in our hearts and in our minds. So accept all that we offer you today, our lives and our gifts. And send us out in peace. May the presence of the Lord continue to be our experience. 
travel with us that we might bring peace to other people. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to sing a chorus now. I think this is a good time just to have a quick check-in on how the new temple's doing. How are we doing here? Oh, and I think, uh, James, you've been left to be the chief architect, have you? Oh, no, they're coming back. It's all right. <laughs> anyway, we've got a throne here. Um, can I just lift... I'll, I'll let you have it back. Can I just lift it up? Get to see the magnificent gold backing to the throne. Imagine this made of gold. Hey, imagine this throne made of gold. Thank you, James. Keep going. And then we've got the gates to the temple here. I won't lift them up because I'll drop them, don't I? Yeah. But they're beautiful. We'll maybe leave them up so that after the service you can come and have a look. Let's sing, for I'm building a people of power. Let us pray together. Lord, remember your church. Confirm and strengthen it. Keep it in peace and pray for those who help support it and hear their prayers. Remember, O oh Lord, all civic authorities, our armed forces, this land in which we dwell. Grant us peaceful times and we may, that we may lead a calm and tranquil life in all godliness and holiness. Remember our friends and family and all who are near and dear to us. Grant them mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, and forgive us our sins. Remember, O oh Lord, those who travel by land and sea and air, the young and the old, orphans and refugees, the sick and the suffering, the sorrowing and the afflicted, on all these, pour out your mercy. Lord, remember our civic leaders and give them the wisdom and strength to serve their communities, for them to be leaders and to help influence others to build compassionate, friendly neighborhoods. Lord, remember our world leaders in this time of tension in many parts of the world. Wars solve nothing, so give them the wisdom and courage to have peaceful dialogue, find common ground to resolve these dire issues. Lord, remember we are your humble servants. Grant us your grace that we may be diligent and faithful, that we may avoid evil company and influence and resist all temptation that we may lead a godly and righteous life, blameless and peaceful. O oh Lord, hear our prayers, and for you, our merciful and compassionate 
and to you are due all glory, honor, and worship. And now together we'll, we'll say the Lord's Prayer. Thank you, David, for uh, leading us in prayer. I, I don't suppose you can see this. No, it's too small, isn't it? Uh, I'll, I'll show James here in a minute because it's a picture of the temple. There you are, I'll let you have a look at the one. And not, not to copy it, but just to see how they got on in Port Moak. In Port Moak, they built a temple as well. They do, actually, it didn't have such a big golden throne as the one that James is building here. But, you know, it's, it's interesting how we would set, how we, how we would honour God, how we would construct places for him to worship. And the most important thing, of course, is for our lives to be a place in which God wants to dwell. Next Sunday, we will have two baptisms here. I'm letting you know now. It'll be very busy, so come early. Um, but it'll be a very special occasion. And it's actually wonderful to have James Smith here today with his two boys. It just reminds us of what a great occasion it was when you were here with us a couple of years ago. Well, we're going to close with a final song, which is called Lord for the years.
Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us, each one of us, now and always. Thank you.